Hello, this is uh, Dr. Sunil Mahagavkar, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering Department, Government Polytechnic. So I will welcome you all for uh, the model number 14 on design of uh, quarter joint. So in the last class or in the last session, we have discussed a thorough discussions on design of a knuckle joint and its applications. So now today we are going to uh, learn about the design of socket and spigot joint. So now let us, uh, we will go for the slide or the presentation of the socket and spigot joint. So as I said, the learning outcomes uh, for the today's session is so what is a quarter joint, the type of uh, quarter joints, applications of the quarter joints, materials used in the quarter joints and then we will go for design of quarter joint. In that we will go for detailed design of sleeve, uh, the socket and the uh, spigot quarter joint. So what is a quarter joint? Quarter joints are used to connect two legs having no relative motion between each other. If you consider a knuckle and quarter joint, so both the cases we are transferring force, either tensile or compressive. But the difference between the knuckle joint is so in the there is no rigid connection between the two parts in case of knuckle joint. It is free to oscillate around the pin. Right? So the axial movement will not be there. But we will have a rotation or the sliding uh, if you use a slider mechanism. So the crank and the connecting rod, the pin joint which is we are using. So that allows the motion, right? So that thing it is there in the knuckle joint. Whereas in quarter joint, so we are not going to get any kind of relative motion between the pin and the, its mating parts. So here also the pin is used. So that is called a quarter pin. Right? So quarter joints are used to connect two links having no relative motion between each other. Okay. So the second point, these joints are connected the two members whose axis are in one line or intersecting but they must be in a plane. Okay. So joints are used to transfer tensile and compressive forces. So the pin which is used in the quarter joint is known as a quarter. A quarter is a flat wedge shaped piece of a rectangular cross section and its width is tapered either on one side or on both sides. You normally you will uh, get on one side only. If uh, the taper is provided on both sides, some locking arrangement must be, uh, you have to make it for the quarter joint. So from one end to the another end for an easy adjustment. Okay. So usually the quarter is one side straight and the other one is a taper. 
the taper varies from 1 in 48 to 1 in 24. So the meaning here 1 in 48 that means if one unit is the height and 48 mm or 48 unit is the base, the hypotenuse which you are joining from opposite one unit to the 48 base. So that angle, so that is known as the tan alpha, so opposite by base. So that is 1 by 48, if alpha is the angle, so 1 by 48. So it is less than 1 by 24. So 1 in 48 to 1 in 24. And it may be increased up to 1 in 8. So it can be increased up to 1 in 8. For this, we have to provide the locking devices. Okay. For the quarter, if you are providing a locking device, then we have to use 1 in 8. So if more is the taper, so it can be very easily removed. If you provide one end only the slight uh, taper, so that wedge reaction will be formed and uh, so as I said, 1 in 8, it is a slope, it is more than 1 in 24 or it is also more than 1 in 48. So the maximum we can give the taper, it is 1 in 8. For this condition, we should have a locking arrangement for the quarter. Okay, so usually the quarter uh, will have one side straight and the other one side is tapered, and it is usually it is given as 1 is to 48, or it is in the range of 1 in 48 to 1 in 48. The quarter is usually made up of uh, mild steel or raw tire. The quarter is a, a temporary uh, joint. It is used to connect the two rigidly coaxial rods as I said discussed and it uh, transmits uh, axial uh, tensile or compressive forces. So it is used in the connecting a piston rod in the crosshead of a reciprocating steam engine. A piston rod and its extension as a tail or pump rod or a strap end of a connecting rod etc. are a joint beam by means of a quarter joint. So this is a, a quarter a joint here and just you try to remember that uh, you will get the different dimensions will be there. So this is a, a socket. It has a hollow portion inside. These are all cylindrical in nature. This is cylindrical rod. This rod is made a socket type. So in that we are fitting up that spigot. So it has got a slot and to insert the quarter and uh, even the socket has got a slot a rectangular slot to insert the quarter so that we will have a firm joint between the socket and the spigot so this is the thickness the thickness is t and here yeah, and the other dimensions as we discuss further so we will discuss all the nomenclature or what are the components of the socket and the speaker quarter joint. So this thing uh, we are studying in detail, socket and speaker quarter joint. The other joints are also there, you can refer uh, uh, RS Kurmi or else you can go through the Bhandari. So, you can write a zip and a quarter joint, a sleeve and a quarter joint. See, the designing thing is same. Once you design socket and speaker. So, this is a, we are, instead of a socket, one socket, we are using a sleeve. 
and the two ends of the rods are fitted by means of two quarters. Okay, so the chips are provided for the quarter so that it should not come out very easily. Okay, so to lock the quarter, we are providing the chip uh, of the things in some uh, in certain cases. Okay, so now let us uh, just I will. Uh, uh, I will show you some of the things which are uh, there we, what we are using in the uh, application of the knuckle joint. So here you can uh, see this uh, part. This is a, actually this is a, just a, a model which is shown here. This is a socket. Okay. So here, this is the thing with the socket. Socket. And this end is it is the spirit. So this is an example of a cross light. Uh, so here uh, is a cross light, and this is the piston rod which is connected. This is a quarter slot is there. So here you can see that uh, total assembly of this one. This is a uh, cross head which is slides which is used in the steam engine. So piston rod. So one end is connected to the cross light. Okay, the other part is connected to the uh, piston okay and this is a connecting rod and further this connecting rod it connects to the crank right so in the crank pin whatever here this joint what we are using this is a knuckle joint so don't get confused with this this is a knuckle joint because it will allow an oscillation motion between this it will allow this type of motion whereas uh, this one and this one so here it is a firm joint so it will not allow any kind of relative motion between the spigot and the socket spigot and socket no relative motion so that is uh, a quarter joint for example you can use uh, um, if you are using a bicycle, the paddle wheel, the paddle wheel of a bicycle, right? So that I can show it here like this. Okay. So these are the paddles uh, normally we used to ride with this one. So this is another paddle of this, viewer. and this is mounted. Uh, uh, and there is uh, some sprocket will be there, isn't it? So this is a chain drive, right? So this is a bicycle in this. So this here, whatever the joint we are using here, to fit this lever onto the axle or this lever, bicycle arm, paddle arm. If you want to fit on this uh, axle, so there we are using a, a quarter pin like this so if you are using a bicycle nowadays everybody is going for with the vehicle they are not uh, knowing so what uh, you are going to lose out from this so this is usually this is a drawback uh, after one hour after uh, four or five months uh, we are getting a play in between the arm and the axle so again we will go for the cycle mechanic and he will repair it he will just hammer that pin and so that one side will, will round on one side and one side is stapled okay so this is a quarter joint which are normally so the a lever arm of a pedal as well as axle it is totally fixed it is intersecting right so this, uh, these are the joints uh, which you can see it here. So, 
here just i will uh, show you what are the as i said so socket and spigot quarter joint sleeve and quarter joint gib zip and uh, quarter joint okay so now let us we will go for the quarter as i said this is a socket spigot and uh, socket and spigot uh, joint this is the socket it is a this is called a socket rod end and this is the outer diameter of the socket and this is the collar okay and uh, you can see the inner hollow portion this uh, thing is nothing but the spigot it has a got collar so as this collar of the socket it is kind of uh, comes in contact with the spigot so this indication of uh, the firm joint of the quarter joint okay so in order to fit this this is a round shape okay you are going to get a round shape this is a round shape this is also round shape right and in order to uh, lock this uh, moment between the spigot and the socket so we had to insert a key right so that key it is known as that is quarter okay so quarter we are inserting so we are making a slot there is a slot in the socket as well as there is a slot in the spigot so this taper quarter it is in, this is a straight and here it is tapered so as the taper what is that uh, i have said it it is 1 in 48 so we are using 1 in 48 to 1 in 24 or maximum to 1 in 8 okay so this is a quarter and uh, normally the width of the quarter b is the mean width of this one because since it is taper it will be maximum here and it will be minimum taking that well, we have to go for the mean of that okay we have to find the mean width of the quarter and the thickness of this quarter it is uh, as shown is uh, t is the thickness okay this is spigot color socket color try to remember this so what is the diameter this d is the diameter of the rod end d is the diameter of the rod end either it is a socket rod end or spigot rod end both one and same okay so the other one after that d we will go for the d1 so d1 is slightly more than this so it is d1 is usually 1.31 times the diameter of the rod end the inside diameter of the spigot or the inside diameter of the socket the outside diameter of the spigot or the inside diameter of the socket it is equal to d1 and usually the d1 value it is uh, 1.31 times the diameter of the rod end okay so these are the proportions so and then a is a margin over here that is after the quarter what is the margin on the left side and similarly the mar there is a margin on the right side right so that is a c here it is a and this is c so as i said there are two questions you are going to ask in the examination usually or in the interview so where the quarter is provided taper on one side not taper on the other side the first thing is that you can say that so not all the quarter is provided with the only on one side some in some quarter you can see also the taper in both sides so if the quarter is provided taper on both sides so it, it is very easy to remove it so 
in such cases where the oftenly we need to have certain uh, maintenance so such things so in such cases we have to go for uh, a different locking arrangement we are using for uh, to cutter if you provide the taper on both sides it may it will come out very easily and if you provide taper on only one side so it is not that easy to come out that means you will have a proper fit between the spigot and the socket a firm fit a tight fit you can get it with by providing a quarter uh, on taper on one side and uh, the second reason they can uh, also they may say that so it, it is it becomes very easy to remove also so both the things whatever i am saying it is not a contradiction so once you firmly if you fix it so when it is working in that case it will not come out very easily suppose if you want to remove this quarter so you just uh, some impact at the bottom portion in the upward direction if you give it so with that impact force so that the quarter it will come out it will lose out the things very easily so if you take a straighter one so because of the friction will be more so in that case it is very difficult to come so that's why we have if you provide a taper on one side and a slight hammering at the bottom portion so you can lose out the quarter and you can take out the quarter for the maintenance of the socket is spigot so this is how the usage of the quarter that is the why the taper is provided on one side or uh, on both sides okay so there is one more question they may ask you so regarding the clearance the clearances are provided in the opposite direction you can see here in the socket the clearance will be there on the left side whereas in the spigot the clearance is there on the right side so this usual clearance is around 2 to 3 millimeter it is around 3 to 2 3 millimeter so the reason for uh, clearance providing clearance on opposite side is that see here when we insert a quarter here so the portion of the quarter which is in comes in contact so i will take a different ink uh, to have this one okay this is blue color it. so this quarter here you will have a contact on this and again the contact will be there in the quarter right as you insert here because of the clearance it does not have contact with the socket on the left side but there is a contact on the right side okay and similarly as you insert here the contact will be there in the left side so left side of the spigot but there is a clearance is there on the right side so when you insert this quarter here so this is uh, comes in contact with this so as this you drive this quarter inside as you drive the quarter inside by hammering action so because of that so this uh, socket it will move in the right direction this will move in the right direction whereas the because of clearance here here there is a clearance so that's why it can move in the right direction see whereas in the so in this we got case what happens here for the same action of the socket which is moving in the right side the spigot it tries to move towards left direction why because here the impact whatever the impact load which are giving it uh, tries to hit this portion 
and this portion it goes towards y direction so that means what you are doing so you are bringing the socket towards the right whereas the spigot it moves in the left direction so because of that the gap between these two it will be reduced and you will have a firm fit of socket and spigot are you getting it so that is the reason we are providing the clearance in the opposite direction okay so uh, i think this is uh, the just i will uh, show you what is the structure that is a how what is the socket how it looks like this this is a, let us say this is the spigot this is spigot collar right and again the end of this rod of this spigot another portion so here uh, there is a portion will be the slot inside this so this is the spigot collar so you should uh, try to make out these things figure what is the shape of that so this diameter is d1 right and uh, this thickness what is what will be this thickness this is the thickness of the quarter because quarter is a, a shape of this kind you are going to get is one side the one straight and the other side is taper right so this thickness is nothing but t okay so the proportional that I have given you what are the things uh, proportional so usually it is a point uh, uh, 25 percent of the diameter of this devil so there is a slot here okay and uh, to this one we are uh, So this is the spigot, this is socket, actually you are not going to get a groove like this, but a curved surface is there, so you can have this type of hashing portion of shading of this one, okay. And further, this is reduced to a solid rod at the end. So this rod end. D is the diameter of this. Okay. So here there is a hollow portion here. So just I will show the hollow portion inside by dotted. So this is a dotted portion inside so that we can insert this spigot into this one, right? And uh, to have uh, this one that is uh, a thing is there, you can have a slot. Some portion it will be 
there in the collar also you may get the slot portion right so this is the slot inside the collar right so it is not a complete solid so there is a slot portion to insert the taper key that is this quarter inside to this one and that goes to the rod also is it clear so this diameter inside diameter is d1 this diameter we will take is the outside diameter of the socket it is d2 right and at this diameter which is more than that this is the outer diameter of the collar spigot collar is d3 and the socket collar diameter we will take it as d4 okay so now this is subjected to the this the whole thing that is uh, it is subjected okay this figure so it is subjected to what uh, a tensile force right so now we will uh, first design design of rod end if d is the diameter if d is the diameter of the rod end of the socket or spigot and sigma t is the allowable tensile stress is the allowable tensile stress so then the load that is the applied load so then the applied load what uh, so the applied load p is equal to applied load p is equal to the internal resisting load internal resistance so now what is internal resistance it is nothing but the resisting area internal resisting area multiplied by stress so here resisting area is pi by 4 into d square into stress is sigma t so here sigma t is allowable stress so that we can uh, find by the strength divided by factor of safety so here we are used the, the maximum normal stress theory using that theory we can find the allowable or permissible stress okay so that thing i can use it here so now this equation the applied load p is equal to pi by 4 into d square into sigma t so from this uh, i can get the diameter because uh, diameter is unknown to us okay so using what is the allowable tensile stress or permissible stress i can get uh, what is the diameter of the rod end so this rod end diameter it will be same for the socket as well as the spigot so this diameters so here this diameter whatever the diameter is there so this diameter is d and here is also the diameter is d for this okay so the same thing uh, I have explained here with this light the design steps the first step so this is a socket 
we subjected uh, to a tensile load. Okay, this is the resisting area. So if D is the diameter, then pi by 4 D square is the resisting area. And the sigma T is the allowable tensile stress. So the applied load is equal to resisting area into permissible stress or induced stress. So resisting area, you can uh, have pi by 4 into D, pi by 4 D square into sigma T is the allowable to tensile. So the T can be calculated. Okay. So after this, we will go for the second uh, step. That is uh, failure of the spigot in tension across the weakest section of the slot. Across the weakest section of the slot. So here, let D1 is the diameter of the spigot. Okay. So, so let us, uh, for this also, I will just uh, go through the section over here this thing see if i consider the spigot now we are considering the spigot in tension that means it may this is the spigot rod so i will uh, draw it separately so that you can understand well So let us say this is a spigot rod, right? So now I will draw this uh, as a collar of this. And uh, this end, this is the other end of this. So we have already designed this diameter D of this. Okay. So now we are designing what is the diameter of this. That is the inside diameter of the socket this is nothing but the inside diameter of socket or the outside diameter, outside diameter of the spigot. So spigot has got a slot like this. So now this is subjected to what tensile? So when it is subjected to tensile, so it may fail over here, right? Or it may fail at this region. So now if I if it fails here, so this net area will be equal to pi by 4 d1 square. Okay. If it fails over at this section, at this section, the net area will be reduced. So if I compare this one and this is the second. So the second area is a uh, weakest of the first one, isn't it? So usually the failure begins at the weakest section. So that's why we have to design the diameter of the socket, uh, sorry, diameter of the spigot, diameter D1 of the spigot by considering by considering tensile failure by considering tensile failure at the weakest section weakest section where it contains the slot region so if d is the diameter of this if d1 is the diameter and this is the slot so this portion i have to remove it so removing this portion 
So what will be the dimension? Net diameter. It is pi by 4 d1 square minus d1 into t where d1 is this and t is the rectangle area. So this is the thickness of the putter is the slot. So this slot area I had to reduce it. So this is the resisting area. Similarly I can get P is equal to resisting area multiplied by stress sigma t for the watt speed out. So if material is same in that case no need of writing speed out I like that. So if uh, for the different material is there so then I have to consider tensile for this speed out like that. Okay. The same thing I will uh, try to explain. Uh, we will uh, uh, with the failure of the spigot in tension across the weakest section or the slots. Okay. So let D1 is the diameter of the spigot or inside diameter of the socket and T be the thickness of the butter. If sigma T is allowable, allowable tensile stress of the uh, spigot material, this must be tensile, it's not shear. Okay, so this is a tensile. Okay, tensile stress of the spigot material. Applied load P is equal to resisting area multiplied by the permissible stress. So, RA resisting area is equal to pi by 4 d1 square minus d1 into t and sigma t is equal to as I said through the normal stress theory we are going to get SYT of vector of safety and using this value I can get uh, pi by 4 d1 square minus d1 into t into sigma t where you have to substitute the values see here the thickness of the cotter it is usually taken as uh, 0.31 times the diameter d1 okay you try to uh, keep it in memory but the thickness of this quarter it is usually point zero point three one times the di diameter d1 okay and when i when i when we put here d1 this is also d1 so what you will get is d1 square so i can take it outside d1 so now again so d1 is equal to i can find out directly d1 square so by using that i can find out directly d1 or else so if i know the proportions so d1 is equal to 1.21 times the diameter because diameter of the rod end already we have calculated so hence as with the proportions uh, we can say that d1 is equal to 1.21 times the diameter d so putting that value over here and uh, get what is the allowable tensile stress or induced stress so this should come less than the allowable or permissible if it is not in that case first thing whatever you have calculated based on the sigma t that is based on this stress we have to find out d1 that's all okay so this is the second step and now we will go for the third one so this is the net area as i shown here resisting area of this failure of the rod or the quarter in crushing see here the quarter is in contact with the spigot as well as the socket right so wherever the contact uh, it comes uh, the contact stresses will be developed so that contact stresses here we are not calling it as bearing because we do not have any relative motion right see as i take this area this is the spigot region this is the cross section of the spigot at this point d1 is the length t is the thickness so t1 d1 into t is the area of contact so what is the crushing stress if, if sigma c is cr is the crushing stress of the rod we know that the area of the resisting 
in crushing it is given by the crushing strength is equal to d1 into t into sigma cr so the applied load p is equal to d1 into t into sigma crushing so using that value i can find out uh, because we have already calculated d1 and t we just put those values and get sigma cr and this should come less than the allowable this should come less than the allowable crushing limit okay crushing of the uh, spigot r crushing of the cotton okay so next thing we will uh, have some proportions you try to remember these factors if you know these proportions you just uh, put the values of the proportion and get the stress see it is not that uh, this uh, once you find the d so d1 is equal to 1.21 d and uh, d2 is equal to 1.7 time times the diameter d3 d4 and whatever the dimensions are the every dimensions i can get with the proportions see uh, these are the proportions only they are not designed okay this is not the end so we have to take these values put these values as we did it uh, in this uh, diameter d1 okay so what we have substituted we have substituted d1 is equal to 1.21 d1 and then we have find uh, found that value of uh, sigma t and that should come less than the allowable tensile and if it is not if it is not coming less than that so then we have to design it based on these proportions okay so try to remember these factors so d1 is equal to 1.21 times d d2 what is where is d2 is here that the outside diameter of the socket it is usually 1.75 to 2 so you can take uh, is equal to 2d or 1.75d and d3 that is d3 is this spigot collar it is 1.5 times the diameter d okay and then d4 is uh, 2.4 times approximately 3 times d it is 2.4 times d that is a d4 value and the thickness of the quarter it is uh, 0.31 and a and c it is the margin at the left and the right side it is equal to 0.75 that is two third it's not half so t1 it is uh, the thickness of the uh, socket collar it is uh, zero